Good morning, everybody. I hope you're all having... So it's trying to connect. Okay, cool. Good morning, <laughs> everybody. I hope you're having a great day. It's beautiful Tuesday. Um, sun is shining. It's a little windy, but that's par for the course up here because we're up on a hill and yeah, it's just usually always windy. Cat hair. Cat hair. Anyway. <laughs> I hope you're all having a great day. I'm going to, oops, that was my messy deck. Even though I just cleaned it here for the party this weekend, yeah. Anyway, I'm just going to invite some people on to see if they'd like to join me. Ow, cat. Okay, cool. Oh, yes. Um. I wasn't on yesterday. I decided that um, we're doing some family stuff yesterday, so I'm like, oh, I'll just I'll just jump on today because it's not like I have most of my views come from like replays. Let's let's be honest. I mean, it's awesome when people can jump on live with me, like usually Brandy or um, Christina's dropped on dro jumped on the last little bit, and you know a bunch of other people. But I just. <sighs> We were with family yesterday, so I was just doing a family thing, which is amazing. Um, so cheers to Tuesday. Got a little coffee in my cup this morning and nothing stronger than that, I promise. Hey, Christina, I was just talking about you. I was like, Brandy and Christina usually jump on. <laughs> uh, thanks for jumping on, girl. So today, among all of the craziness of the weekend, um, hey, Sadie, good morning, good morning to you too. I, we have my daughter's sixth birthday, my oldest daughter's sixth birthday. Cheers to you, girl. Um, and we didn't have a huge party like we normally do. We had a bunch of, a bunch of family and some friends and everything come over and it wasn't too big but it was really good it was outside it was a gorgeous day it rained a tiny little bit while we we're doing the pinata figures but other than that it was really good um, and had some cake and some burgers and the kids swam in the pool and you know it was a lot of fun I kind of miss it and it was nice to not have as big of a party normally I invite her whole class and yeah, obviously I didn't do that this year, but it's okay, you know, a few of her friends came and a couple of, like I said, her family and stuff. So it was pretty, pretty fun for her. She hasn't seen some of her classmates, her friends in a, a little while. So it was nice for her to see them. Um, today, hey Joanne, good morning to you. Um, today I was going to talk about how to know when to quit your side hustle. And the reason why I decided on this topic today is because, um, you hear, you know, there's opportunity everywhere. There's enough of everything to go around. You know, there's abundance everywhere. And there is legitimately there is, there is so much there's there's customers for everybody there's money out there for everybody you just have to let it into your life right if you've um read the magic if you've read a happy pocket full of money any of those amazing books you know it you know it to be true and and that's great um but maybe this particular side hustle is not doing it for you um, opportunity doesn't always equal ease. Not everything is easy and lots of side hustles out there require some sort of, um, some sort of investment, whether it's financial, whether it's time investment, whether it's energy, creativity, there's some sort of investment involved. And usually if you don't have a lot of money, then you have to invest time and it goes the other way around. If you have more money, then you don't have to invest as much time because then you can hire people to do things right like run your Facebook ads like I do for some people or um, I do a lot of other random things for other people too and it's because they want to hire me they don't want 
the menial task of doing these things for themselves because either one, they don't quite understand how it goes and they don't want to take the time to learn because they have the money. So may as well delegate to somebody else or they just couldn't be bothered, right? They're just like, oh, well, you can do it for me. So why not just have you do it for me? So like I said, not every opportunity equals ease. Um, more often than not, it does not equal ease. Getting into side hustles is not, it's not easy. It just, it take it takes work. And like I said, whether it's some sort of investment, whether it's time or money or energy, I suffer with the creativity because I'm not incredibly creative when it comes to my content or I don't know, just stuff. I know how to do like I'm a technical person. I am the left brain technical. Give me numbers and a process and I got this. But the creativity stuff, I, I lack a little in. So that's where I need to have a mastermind or something to bounce ideas off of people or I can't, I don't really want somebody to write my copy for me because that's to, to me personally, it feels kind of like it's cheating. And then what if the copywriter doesn't really know my audience? Right? So that's why I feel like I, I like video. Cause I could just like spit fire. I could, you know, just like whatever, just talk to you guys and be honest and real and, and whatever. And, and to me that doesn't 100% come through in my copy. Maybe I'm not sure. Anyway, that's just me. That's me. And not everybody's like me, right? <laughs> we're all different. We're all different people. So you start your side hustle. You go, you go, you go. You invest a little time. You invest a little money. You're like, yeah, I'm going. I'm doing these things. I'm doing all these things. Fast forward six, 12 months. Say so you're like a year into your side hustle. Maybe the cash register isn't dinging as much as you hoped it would. Or maybe it did at first and then it kind of waned a little bit especially right now, like there's so much going on in the world that it's extremely unpredictable to know what your audience or your customer base is going to do. So maybe you've lost excitement for the process for maybe it's just like it was a shiny object at first and now it's like, ugh, it's kind of dulled a little because of all the work that I have to put in. Um, maybe all this wasn't what you thought it would be. Maybe you got, I don't want to say scam because it's not a scam, but maybe you got talked into it by a really good salesperson and they're like, this is how it's going to be. And you're going to love it because of all the stuff going on and all these people in the community and blah, blah, blah. I get that 100%. I, um, not necessarily the stuff that I'm doing now, but a few years ago, there's, you know, I live on the country. It seems like everybody, every housewife out here is peddling something. And don't get me wrong. I love them all to bits. And when I need that something, whether it's Tupperware or Mary Kay or Rodan and Fields or whatever it is, I will buy from them because I will support my local people. But... I don't want to be sold on an opportunity. That's not me. And they're like, you should really become an ambassador. I'm like an ambassador, right? Well, sorry, that's not really my thing. I like doing what I do and I don't yell it from the rooftops. So I love providing value and taking everything that I've learned over the last couple of years since I started my own side hustle and just helping you guys out where I can giving you value where I can. And if that's not something, if you, you know, if you're like me and you're like, don't want to, you know, be that person doing go lives on your personal page every five minutes for a, a product. Well, <laughs> maybe, maybe selling stuff like that isn't really for you, but maybe it is. Maybe you love doing that. And that's awesome. Let's do that. Okay. So, but isn't all this part of being an entrepreneur, Taking the obstacle, uh, whether it's, you know, maybe um, you've sacrificed a little time freedom, maybe you've sacrificed a little money, maybe you've sacrificed a little of something. And this obstacle is simply an opportunity to grow, to learn, to adapt. 
maybe it's a side hustle. After, it is a side hustle after all. Shouldn't I be hustling? I mean, who's at the, um, Lori Grenier that said that, um, what did she say? She said that being an entrepreneur is about living like nobody would for a number of years until you build your businesses or whatever so that you can live like nobody does. So you can live like you want to, right? Yeah, that's paraphrasing her because I, I did it really badly. I don't have the quote in front of me. <laughs> so it's all about hustling, right? doing your job, doing this work, so you can hustle, 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 and then have the freedom later, which in some cases that may be. But maybe the thought of ditching this sounds enticing, but also terrifying. Remember when you didn't have so much going on, so much on your plate, and you could just do what you wanted? You could sit, sorry, dandelion fuzz. You could sit and watch Netflix all day if you wanted to. Now, probably not so much. You could... I don't know. What else, do, what else do people do that don't have a side hustle? I don't remember what I used to do. <laughs> but the thought of doing this and the extra money that it brings in, whether it's, you know, 500 a month, 1,000 a month, a couple thousand a month, that little bit of extra money for all that hard work, maybe you kind of like that a little bit of extra money. So it's hard to decide to quit because you know, the little extra cash was nice. Um, but what would your family and friends think if you quit or started something new, right? Oh, there's Pam, she's doing that affiliate marketing, but wait, she's got an ad agency too? But wait, what else is she doing? She's doing coaching? Yes, yes I am. And granted the affiliate thing is not really like the forefront of my focus, but as an entrepreneur, isn't it kind of silly to not have affiliate offers? Things like, you know, I'm an affiliate for Aweber or SiteGround or Affiliate Institute, all these things that could help somebody else that I might be coaching or being have a, a client in my ad agency. You just never, ever know. So it's good to keep those offers. They're just not on my front burner right now. Um, how can you be sure that this is the right move? You could just be, and I quote, three feet away from gold. There is that saying, oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm so close. I feel I'm so close. I feel like I'm on the brink. I don't want to quit now. So it's not, not an easy decision to make. One million percent it's not. In order to make the decision, you really need to evaluate why you started and why you stayed for this long. Because if it's not something that you truly wanted to do or loved to do or what, like if you didn't have a really good why, then you wouldn't have stayed the six, eight, 12 months that you have. For me, it's been longer. It's been 12, I don't know, it's over two years. I can't count. So do you believe that this is why you started do you believe in the why, the reason why you started in the first place? What is your why? And um, to determine that, because my why has changed a couple times since I've started. I've had to make it more meaningful since I've started. And um, th the way I have changed it is the values. There's a values um, exercise that we did at uh, by Dr. Demartini, Dr. John Demartini. And if you want the PDF, um, I'm sh I don't know if it's in the group here somewhere. I think I put it in the group somewhere, but I could put it in the files of this group. Um, if you're watching this replay on my YouTube channel or my website and you're not my group, there's a link around this, uh, uh, there's a link around this video somewhere that you can join my group. Just uh, click on it, request access. My Facebook is free to join and I have amazing resources. All my trainings are housed in here. I have a tutorial on creating eye-catching content with your smartphone and I've got a bunch of other stuff. Some free books and ebooks and meditations and stuff like that. Anyway, off the topic. But that value thing I've done three or four times now and my answers changed, not completely, but little bits every time. Like as I've grown as a person, as an entrepreneur, my answers have grown, hi, <laughs> my daughter's in the window, hi, you want me to open the door, where's Zoe? 
She's not up yet. It's it's after ten o'clock and my kids are just waking up. Whoop, whoop. Um, just a second, I'm gonna open the door for it. Whoop, please. was I? All right. So do you believe in the reason why you started in the first place? Like I said, my why has changed a few times since I've started. Um, where do you see your side hustle in six months from now? Do you see progression? Do you see innovation? Do you see something? Do you see maybe a little extra education? Hey, Brandy. Mwah. Thanks for tuning in, girl. Yes, I'm still on. I like to blab. Anyway, <laughs> um, the next one, which parts of your side hustle do you enjoy the most or the least? Maybe you should write those down. Maybe you should be like, oh, I love doing things like go lives. I love jumping on one-on-one -on -one calls with clients. I love, I love the freedom that my side hustle gives me because I can be at home with my kids. I don't have to go to a crazy job every day or every weekday nine to five or even before when I was a safety officer I had to be in town by like 6 30. I had to be at work at 6 30. That means I had to leave this house at 5 30 because I live almost an hour from town. <laughs> so I do not miss those crazy hours. Believe me. Cheers Brandy. By the way it was Brandy's birthday this past weekend so I'd like to wish her a happy birthday again because she's awesome. Mwah. Um, what are your first thoughts when you wake up in the morning before you go to bed? What are your last waking thoughts before you fall asleep? Is it, oh, I got to do that go live tomorrow. Well, I can help you with that. I can definitely help you with getting over your fear of go lives because it's just a matter of doing it and it's awesome. Um, cause I love doing go lives. <laughs> Brian, he's like, okay, you can shut up now about doing go lives. <laughs> Oh, he farted. Ah! <laughs> um, where was I? How would you rate your health, your mental, your emotional, your physical health compared to when you first started? Like for me, the last two years have been amazing. The growth and the just like I've seen so much self-love and self-development happen within, within me. So I know that this is like completely worth doing every second of me doing my side hustle is like completely worth it. Uh, how much is dedicated to your side hustle versus other endeavors? So how much, um, how much time do you put into side hustle versus other things? I know that I compared this to like watching, been watching, binge watching Netflix all day. And it's not something I do a lot anymore, but I still get to do it once in a while. Um, when I kind of, I put my phone down and my hubby and I watch, we have a couple shows that we watch on Netflix and we watch a little bit of that. And it's just, it's our time. So my phone goes down, you know, and it's just him and me. Same thing with my kids. I'm outside with my kids. I bring my phone just because, so that I could take pictures. But other than that, I don't, I'm not like on it constantly. Um, how do you compare your relationships now to when you started? Honestly... It's different because my husband doesn't 100% support what I do, but it's gotten better the last little bit because I've pivoted my business a little bit. What, sweetie? You have your rubber boots on. Sweet. All right, go play. I don't know why you have rubber boots on. It's dry out here. Um, so I've pivoted my business a little bit. Like I said, I'm not strictly affiliate marketing anymore. I have my agency and my coaching business. So... Anytime I get on a Zoom call, he's not like, oh, you're on Zoom again. It's like, hmm, how much are they paying you this time? <laughs> so he's like, oh, you did get money? So he's seen, you know, my bank account come up a little bit the last little while, like I said, because I pivoted. So he, he doesn't mind so much. And then I do, like I said, I, I make sure that I take the time. And it's only in the last year or so that I have actually put my phone down and taken the time to be with him. At certain intervals in in his day and our day um if we he needs help on the farm same thing it's like when he's off work and we're on the farm together it's it's the same i'm like okay yeah you get my help for two hours and then i have to go do this for a client and he's like okay deal so 
the communication has been a lot better for sure. And my kids just, they love having me home. Like, I don't think I could send them to a full-time daycare or babysitter. You know, I, it would, it would kill me once a week. I wouldn't mind having them go to a babysitter again. I'm not going to lie, but we are making do with what we have right now. Um, where was I? How much free time, if any, do you have each day and how do you spend it? So do you read during your free time? Do you binge watch Netflix? Do you hang out with your kids? Like write this stuff down. This is definitely um, something to gauge when it comes to if you needed to quit your side hustle. If you're constantly on your side hustle like all day, every day, and you have no time for anything else, maybe it's time to look, take a hard, hard look at it. Um, if t And this is like one of my favorite questions and Brandy can agree with me. If time and money were no object, what would you do or not do? Would you go fishing like the kids and I are going to do later today? We're going to go up the, up the road to the lake and go fishing. Or would you, what would you do if time and money were no object? Would you be doing your side hustle still? That's a good, that's a loaded question. So quitting may feel like admitting failure. But it can also be the most healing for you what for you and what you do for yourself. Brandon says 100%. Identify your true priorities and adjust your life to those priorities. Your, your side hustle should be fitting into your life and not your life around your side hustle. That is just the way it is. And that's why I like doing what I do. My affiliate marketing, my coaching, my agency, my businesses, even though it's plural, fit into my life and not the way other, the other way around. There's flexibility. There has to be flexibility in your side hustle, not in your life. There has to be flexibility in your side hustle for there to be flexibility in your life. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so instead, and maybe even instead of quitting, maybe you need to pivot like I did when I was talking about how I kind of took from affiliate marketing, which I still kind of do, but I took it and I like what I've learned from doing affiliate marketing and I'm doing other things. I've got other businesses on the go and that's how I can, I've kind of diversified a little bit. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so like I said, sometimes it's not a point of quitting. Maybe it's a pivot point. Maybe it's a fork in the road. Maybe it is a quitting point. You do not know unless you take these questions that I went through and just like really do a hard look, meditate on them, think about them, journal on them. Journaling is such, writing things down on paper is such a, a really good, a good way to get things out. So if you've got everything stuck in your brain and it's all mulling around and mushing around, get it out on paper and everything will just be that much clearer. I like meditation. I meditate on pretty much any big decision. I meditate every day, but um, big decisions get a little extra meditation. Visualizing. Visualizing is huge. Like if if you are seeing, you know, if the time and money were no object, what would you be doing? If you're seeing that in your brain every day and your side hustle does not coerce, it doesn't like compute with it, then maybe it's, on, like I said, it's time to pivot. It's time to, to find something different. Maybe it's time to quit. I love it because I can look back and see how much I've grown writing things down. Yes, Brandy, journaling is so huge. Like, if you're not journaling, get on that shit. Find yourself a really cool notebook. This notebook is not very cool. It's just a regular notebook. But you can find them at, like, Walmart or the dollar store or whatever. It's a, I have one that I take my notes in for. Uh, I took it in for, like, the level one certification. I took it for our Excel. I have it for the accelerator. It's, like, AI-specific, like, affiliate institute, education-specific. And it's got on the front, it says, girl boss. I was like, yeah, I'm a girl boss. <laughs> so whatever motivates you, whatever kicks you in the butt to get you going, get a notebook like that. Get an awesome pen, colorful, whatever. Get a bunch of those. Uh, when I was in... When I was in high school, I used to write my notes in gel pens. I used to color code everything. Yes, I'm a nerd. I will admit it. But the point is to do things that you enjoy. Like if you want to color code your notes, your journal, go for it. If it makes you happy, go for it. So on that note, I'm going to sign off. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think, what day is it today? I think I'm going to go Tuesday again next week. 
Um, we'll see how it goes with my hubby's schedule because like I've been kind of, like I said, flexibility, right? I've been kind of going with his schedule and this, you know, doing my go lives. I love doing my go lives, but if, if we've got stuff going on on the farm, then I'm not going to stop everything and do my go live quick. Sorry. I'll do it another day. That's just the way it is sometimes. But, oh, she, she had a cat. You want to come say bye? Here. Bye. Oh, my fluffy bye. child. Can you wave? Bye. You blow kisses? Ah, you're so sweet. <laughs> I will see you next week uh, in the same group. And like I said earlier, if you're not in my group, if you're not in my group, then I'm sure there's a link around here somewhere that you can request access into my group. And then you can pop on live with me like Christina did, Joanne and Sadie and Brandy. I love you ladies so much. Thank you for popping on with me live. And I will see you next week. Bye. <laughs>